Okay. I'm, I'm hoping everybody can hear me. Uh, and, and if so, welcome. Uh, it's a very, very busy time. So we really appreciate you making the effort uh, to join this call today. <clears throat> we're going to try and take you through uh, Data Can, what it is, what it means to you, uh, and how you can get involved. Uh, I'm, uh, I work for the Yorkshire and Humber Academic Health Science Network. Some of you, uh, I think, will, I can see from the panel, will know about the network and what we do and what we're here uh, for. I'm going to talk about that uh, just a little bit before we get into this. Your agenda for today really is about the people in this region who are at the center uh, of driving uh, the Data Cam project, which is a national initiative, but with really strong roots in Yorkshire. And I think we're gonna uh, start off with Matt Cooper, who's the Chief Operating Officer for Data Cam. He's gonna talk to you a little bit about the general introduction. And Monica Jones, uh, who's also based in Yorkshire, is gonna talk about how uh, Data Cam links into the Yorkshire Care Record and Lycra. And then we're going to have a contribution from our industry partner from IQVIA, Yoshiko Cook, who's going to talk about the importance really of industry partnership and in making this all work. And, and again, talking about the opportunities this presents both to the region, our patients, uh, our, our provider organizations, uh, and, and uh, you know, to, to maximize the return on this work. Uh, and then finally, we're going to finish off with Professor Jeff Hall, who's going to to talk a little bit about uh, how this work links into other pieces of work in the region, like the Digital Pathology Initiative, uh, and, 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 and how to get involved as well. Uh, next slide, please, Monica. Uh, Lou, please. Sorry, so the HCN, as, all, as you all know, is, uh, is a network of networks. Uh, we're obviously Yorkshire and Humber. We like to think ourselves as the best of the 15. Uh, and, and we're really about connecting academia, NHS, local authorities, third sector policy, right? You know, everybody that's required to make things happen around uh, health and innovation in particular is in our remit. And we're really committed to data camp because it's an opportunity to bring together some of the real assets in the region around data and data science and data infrastructure and maximize the return for patients in the region, hospital systems in the region. Uh, and also it's a great attractor to businesses from outside the region to come into the region. It's a great attractor for other academic organizations to come to Yorkshire uh, and get themselves involved with really high quality research. Uh, and I think that's really one of the messages I want you to leave with today is the fact that this, this initiative is here to serve the population in Yorkshire and Humber. Uh, and, and I think getting involved with it uh, will bring benefits to, to patients, to organizations and to clinicians in the region. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, our mission is about improving health, uh, driving down costs in the system and stimulating economic growth. Data Count does that in spades. Uh, and I think we, we're going to be keen supporters of it uh, through, throughout its, uh, its, its lifespan. Next slide. And, and really, this is a slide that sort of gets to the heart of the issue of why we want to uh, be involved in Data Count in the region. 97% of, of, of patients uh, want and are willing to have their data used in research, uh, but only something like 5% of, of, of eligible patients get into clinical trials. We want to drive that 5% up uh, and to use the data that people are, are keen to be shared better. And clinical trials, as we all know, are really, really hard. Uh, you know, targeted precision oncology trials typically go on after, you know, 1% of a population. Uh, so it's really hard to find those patients. Data can will help us find them. Uh, and it would also help us get the protocol right first time, yeah. reduce the need for amendments, uh, and, and, and really make sure that when we go after uh, patients to enter into patient trials, we, 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 we predict accurately how many patients we can find, where they are, and then get them into the trial. And actually, the more patients get into clinical trials, the better health organizations do. We know that's a well-established fact now, and I think we're, we're keen to, to make sure the region as a whole benefits from that opportunity. Uh, and, uh, you know, data can will help us with all of these things. I'm gonna, high, I'm gonna hand over now to Matt Cooper. He's gonna take you, start, start taking you through in a little bit more detail uh, what data can is all about on the ground. Uh, and again, if you've got questions, put them on the chat. I'll try and collate them uh, and bring them to the panel at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Nev, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, yes, as Nev said, uh, my name is Matt Cooper. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of uh, DataCan, the Digital Innovation Hub for Cancer. And uh, what I'd like to do in the next 10 minutes or so is just introduce you to the Digital Innovation Hubs, a bit of background about DataCan and, and our, our partners that are involved in that. So this all sort of started really back in uh, the autumn of 2017 with the Life Sciences 
industrial strategy that was written by Sir John Bell for the UK government and set out a number of recommendations uh, for the life sciences sector being key to UK PLC, both in terms of the economy, it's worth around about £31 billion a year to the UK economy, job creation, but also for the promotion of the, the great innovation that's coming out of the, uh, of UK, the UK PLC. Uh, the NHS is, is central of this uh, and it's a, a unique selling point for the, for the UK. In response to the strategy, the government produced uh, two sector deals and, and data and the importance of health research data was, was key in, in, in both of those uh, strategies. They set up an industrial strategy challenge fund to uh, provide the resource to, to, to drive our data to early diagnosis and, and precision medicine um, program of, of activities. And they tasked Health Data Research UK with leading on a, a program to appoint uh, digital innovation hubs, which would be, um, be able to, to make it faster and easier for researchers to combine and use data from, from across the UK in, in a secure manner. And those, the hubs uh, were, the, the programme was launched in 2019, the competition to, to find hosts for that. And the, the hubs were awarded in October last year. And uh, DataCan is, is one of those, those hubs. Uh, next, please, Louise. So um, the NHS and other organisations have already uh, been collecting lots of healthcare data over the years, but perhaps it's not always that that simple and, uh, and, and quick for researchers to access and, and analyze that data. So the idea for the uh, Health Data Research UK is, is to provide the NHS, academia, and uh, commercial life sciences uh, company users better access to, uh, to, to data sets, but also um, provide the patients and the public the, uh, the security and, and their expectation that that data should be used in, in a safe and a, and a joined, up, uh, joined up manner. And so the, what we're looking at is all different types of data for its longitudinal, event-based, uh, multimodal curated data sets and accessing them in a, in a single, simple, easy to use method. That These data sets are UK wide and they're going to be high quality data. It, it's not just data that's sat in, in, uh, in, you know, in, the, in the cupboards of, of single institutions. And then we're going to be looking at how we can make sure we can get access to that data in, in a quick manner and that it's as streamlined as possible so that the governance and contracting and, and approvals processes is, is as uh, expedited a, a, as possible. Another key thing for Health Data Research UK is that they are able to uh, provide or advise on the expertise for health data um, research. So domain specialists uh, and special um, uh, analytics but also how we can use new technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning to really uh, you know, get, make best use of, of the excellent uh, health data that we've got in the UK. And for multiple purposes, so looking at using the data for early diagnosis, for real world data and real world evidence trials. And, and as Nev we talked about earlier, looking at how we can use this for, for clinical trials and use this data to rapidly identify cohorts of patients to, to, to participate in clinical research. But, but key to this and underpinning it all is making sure we can build the patients and the public's confidence that we're going to be able to use that data in, in a trusted, secure and safe manner. Next slide, please, Louise. And of course, the data can is focused on the needs of uh, cancer patients and cancer services. So over half of the UK um, citizens at some point will, will get cancer. But the UK is the, the, one of the lower five year survival rates uh, across Europe. And of course, it's very expensive. It costs the NHS about uh, £7 billion pounds annually, for, annually for, for, for cancer care. So it's really important that we can use the data in the best ways possible to, to, to have data-driven approaches for, for patients and for, for, the, for the healthcare services in, in the cancer setting. And we're hoping that data can, can potentially contribute to the UK effort to save 30,000 lives a year by informing better deployment of current approaches and providing cancer intelligence to help drive innovation in, in the field of, of cancer. And this is part of the health service wide approach to making better use of the data that, that's out there. Next slide, please. So the vision of data can is to unlock the power of health data to improve the lives of people affected by cancer and really looking at it in sort of three, three key areas. One of those is you know, the, the access and, and uh, to, to data sets. So enabling and expanding the UK wide cancer data sets to make it uh, more easily accessible for research. So linking existing data sets together where they're at there and enriching those data sets with, with other information such as genomics data or, or imaging data. 
and providing that data in, in as clean a way as possible. So where it's needed to curate those data sets to, to, to make it uh, to a, higher, a higher level of information to, to make it usable for, for research. Secondly, to support NHS delivery of care. So using this data to track variations in care, both at a regional and at a national level. Benchmarking uh, comparable hospitals together. So using that data to show you know, how the services that they're providing differ and how they could be improved. And understanding what treatment options are out there and how we can we can better uh, better provide treatments and and look at variations in treatments for, for cancer patients and thirdly as a recurring theme here looking at supporting clinical trial design site selection and patient recruitment so using nhs data to, to look at those feasibility um, uh, surveys for, for clinical trials and seeing how we can use national data sets to enable patients to take part in in more trials than they have done uh, previously Next slide, please. And what's really important is that patients are at the heart of, of what we do and that they were really key and critical to the application that we sent in to Health Data Research UK to, to, to host a, a hub. And they're involved in all decisions uh, at all levels of the, the Data Can Digital Innovation Hub. They're on uh, our steering board, which uh, meets on a quarterly basis. We have patients on our management group, which meets monthly and has the oversight of the day-to-day -day operations of DataCan. And that we also have patient representatives inputting into our projects and our work streams. And already over, over the last few months, patients have been involved in the recruitment of our senior staff. Patients have been in involved in the review of all the contracts that we've signed to date. They've been included in, in the discussions we've had with life sciences companies about how we might partner or collaborate with, with, with companies. Patients have reviewed, but have also have produced materials that have been placed onto our website. And they've been really uh, key to um, the involvement of producing a, a patient public involvement and engagement training program. And we're very lucky in DataCan to have such a, a, an experienced uh, and uh, and dedicated group of patients. And they're involved not just with DataCan, but in wider UK um, efforts and, and providing input uh, from a patient perspective into a number of different programs. They're also involved in other national groups like Use, Use My Data uh, to, to, to provide input about how best use, uh, how data can be best used. Next slide, please. And DataCan is a, 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 a UK-wide organisation. We, we're going to work across all, all four nations of the UK. And we're a unique partnership of NHS organisations, uh, patients, uh, charities and, uh, uh, and academia. And uh, as I said, we, we also have a commercial partner as well. And we're um, uh, hosted by uh, UCL Partners, which is based in London. But they're closely linked into the, the One London network. We've got Queen's University Belfast, who represent Northern Ireland and Wales. We've got the University of Leeds and, Le and Leeds University at, and Leeds Teaching Hospitals NHS Trust on behalf of the Yorkshire and Humber region as part of our partnership as well. We have Genomics England and we have IQVIA as our, uh, our, our commercial partner and IQVIA, the human uh, data science company. And our partners are also involved and aligned with Health Data Research UK centres in, in, in the country. So there's the Health Data Research UK centre in London at, at UCL. There's the recently uh, designated Northern uh, Centre, uh, which uh, Leeds is part of uh, in the Yorkshire Humber region. And there's also uh, the, the centre across uh, Northern Ireland and, and Wales. And IQVIA's role in, in this piece is is to uh, help um, set up the Oncology Data Network, which uh, Josh will talk about later on, but also to help advise DataCan on uh, our commercial strategy and, and engagement with life sciences companies, which is going to be essential to our long-term uh, sustainability. Next slide, please. And we've received fantastic support from, uh, from across, across the UK from a wide range of organisations, some of which are shown on, on, this, on the slide there, from you know, charities to research institutions and, and cancer hospitals. Uh, and you can see there that Yorkshire and Humber Care Record and the Yorkshire and Humber Academic Health Science Network are, are key supporters uh, of DataCan. And we're seeking to bring in um, associate partners as well, both uh, to, uh, to drive longer term collaborations with key organisations, but also to be able to access you know, important and, uh, and nationally key data sets as well and to, to, to contribute towards the sustainability of DataCan. We've got considerable strength already uh, in the Yorkshire and Humber region, but we want to, to grow that and develop that further. And, and Monica and Jeff will, will talk about that uh, a little bit later on as well. Next slide, please. 
So uh, Data County is one of uh, seven uh, data uh, hubs that was, uh, was set up by Health Data Research UK. The others are Breathe, which is the, the respiratory hub uh, uh, for, based out of uh, Edinburgh. There's Discover Now, which is the hub for real world evidence, which is uh, based in London. They, they've got a focus uh, initially, at least on, on diabetes. There's a Gut Reaction, uh, based out of Cambridge, looking at inflammatory bowel disease. There's Insight, based out of Birmingham, which is uh, the, the hub for uh, eye health. And they've got a focus on that, looking at uh, artificial uh, intelligence to, to get better insight into research in, into eye disease. NHS Digitrial, based out of Oxford, is the hub for clinical trials. And they're looking at how best to, to, to utilise national NHS data sets to be able to do um, national level screening of patients for feasibility for trials, but also for participation in, into trials from a, from a single national uh, level. And there's uh, also Pioneer, based out of, as well out of Birmingham, the digital um, the hub for uh, acute care, linking together uh, community data sets, uh, primary uh, and uh, ambulance services with hospital records to, to get insights into, into, into treatments as well. So we're a sort of a, a group of seven hubs which, which we collaborate very closely together on, on, uh, on shared aims as well. Next slide please. And the important thing is by working with um, data custodians, the, you know, the owners of the data sets from, from across the UK, you know, we're hopefully going to make it easier to, to find and access and use those data sets to facilitate uh, research into, into new treatments and improvements hopefully in care for, for, for patients, in, in our case affected by cancer, but for the other hubs in, in the areas of, of, um, of medicine that they're, they're working in. And, and we really want to make sure that by um, working with uh, patients and the public and the health professionals, we can ensure that um, the data sets that's being uh, accessed and used for research is, is being used transparently and that it's being used responsibly and that the, the benefits are, are returned back to the NHS and to, to the wider UK. So both for, for researchers enabling faster and more accurate uh, data uh, for, for clinicians and, and patients, making sure we can get um, you know, new diagnostics, new medicines and treatments quicker. For, for companies, both large and small, enabling them to, to deploy their new innovations into, into the NHS and, and for the wider society to, to improve uh, health services, you know, um, creating jobs and, and generate increased investment into, into UK PLC, which is going to be uh, really critical in, in, the, in the coming years. Next slide, please. And so we've been sort of we've set up or made the award in in October. So we you know really the the last uh, the last three four months is where we've really really got going and we've already started to to make an impact. This is a, a slide that showed uh, some um, media interest that we generated about three weeks ago with a paper we produced in collaboration with the University College uh, London that was focused on on the impact of the the COVID emergency on the mortality rates of pay, people in uh, with cancer. Uh, and it used data from uh, about three and a half million uh, patient records in, in England. And, and the modelling that we produced showed that the, um, the, the effects of the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic on, on the cancer populations prior to, to the, the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, around about 31,000 newly diagnosed cancer patients would, would die in, in each year. But we modelled that uh, because of the, the effects of uh, COVID on the cancer populations and uh, on the cancer services, we could see that around about um, 6,000 additional deaths could occur in newly diagnosed uh, cancer patients. And that that could actually rise to around about 18,000 additional deaths if all people are currently living with cancer are considered. We also used local uh, data from our connections with uh, NHS uh, cancer centres around the country to look at um, the, uh, the weekly data coming from, from their centres for um, urgent referrals from GPs and found that there was a decrease in about 76% of urgent referrals from GPs with, uh, for patients with suspected uh, cancers and about a 60% decrease uh, in chemotherapy appointments for cancer patients um, compared to the pre-COVID uh, uh, levels. And that's going to have really important uh, effects on both the, the um, redesign of services when, uh, when they're coming back into play in whatever the, the new normal looks like, but also in prioritising patients as, as they, those services get up and running because patients may have had uh, you know, delayed diagnosis now or may, may now be presenting with you know, later stage uh, cancers. So we've you know, already made, uh, made an impact uh, using data from across the UK, but also with the, the contributions from, from the Yorkshire and Humber region. Uh, next slide. 
So hopefully in the last 10 minutes, I've been able to describe a bit to you about what data can it is up to and how we want to work. And I'll hand over to my colleagues. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much, Matt. Um, hi, I'm Monica Jones. I, I, I didn't have the, enough control to unmute myself. I was being controlled centrally, so which is probably quite a good thing. Um, so anyway, um, over the next 15 minutes, um, I'm just going to take you through specifically sort of focusing on the local healthcare record exemplars and the auction number care record, uh, of which a number of people on the call uh, will be intimately uh, uh, aware of, but it actually this is looking at it through a data can sort of lens. So I'm the chief data officer for data can. Um, I'm also associate director of the, the newly formed HDI UK North, um, which is focusing initially on the better care partnership, particularly around sort of frailty. Um, and also for the last couple of years, I've been exec lead for the auction of a care record for population health uh, management. Um, and we're, um, we'll, um, I'll bring that into play. Okay, thanks, Louise. Next one. So, um, Matt explained very comprehensively there the sort of the background of the um, of, of DataCan um, and, and in particular sort of uh, around where we fit in. What I want to do uh, with this slide really is just sort of say where we fit into the, to the ecosystem uh, that are the digital innovation hubs. So, um, we um, sit really in the middle, acting as a broker between the NHS, um, HDI UK Research Alliance, which are predominantly NHS organisation, but other national organisations such as, uh, as, as charity and, and specialty specific component parts. Um, and then um, there is the Health uh, Data Research Innovation Gateway, which is an initiative that was launched at the same time as the Digital Innovation Hubs. Um, and that's really about the sort of the window out to the public, whether those are, are researchers, industry, NHS, charities and the government publicly uh, facing. And that is essentially a description of the metadata that are available in terms of actually us providing better access um, and, um, and improving the quality of, of, of data sets. Um, and very importantly, uh, as, as has also been mentioned, you know, this is about the trustworthiness of, uh, of the use of data and, and, and with heavy patient and public sort of benefit uh, involved into it. Okay, thanks. So what will data can do? So there are three strands to that. As I just mentioned, we're about improving access uh, to cancer data for, for research by making it easier, supporting researchers and data controllers. The next sort of pillar is around making it more usable for research. So one of the key tenants and, and one of our um, um, requirements as a digital innovation hub is to in, increase data completeness and quality. The feedback that we get from researchers, whether there's an academic or industry, is that, that actually this is hugely important. Um, and um, the, there is a piece of work that is, is going on. I'm, I'm sort of leading through HDI UK Central about improving um, data quality and data, data utility, finding out what re is really important um, in terms of, 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 of improving those, uh, the, the, the data and practical tips and tools in order to support it. And then finally, the, report, uh, the support of real-time uh, real cancer data, which, which Josh will cover. I think it's important to point out that we're, DataCan is not a data controller, that all data access and services rely on the approval of existing UK data controllers, but we will act as a data processor um, if, if, if directed to do so. Thanks, Louise. Next. So Yorkshire and Humber, you know, this is um, very much sort of what we've been focusing on through the Yorkshire and Humber Care Record, uh, the LICRA programme in our region over the last sort of couple of years. Um, and it, it won't come as a surprise to a lot of people that there, that there are some significant challenges in terms of, of life expectancy, in terms of, um, of multimorbidity, um, and essentially the, the, the size and the scale uh, of, of, of the challenge. Um, and so we essentially you know, want to be able to, 
to focus in on that. And from the YHDR perspective, we chose two key themes um, that were, um, were our priorities, and that was cancer and urgent care. So it wasn't a coincidence that essentially our bid to become uh, a digital innovation hub sort of started in, in, in Yorkshire and Humber and then sort of extended to a, a national um, uh, uh, initiative um, and, and, and therefore we're sort of building on the infrastructure uh, of, of what we've already sort of delivered through that central NHS England funding next. Um, and so shaping the future, you know, what have we delivered sort of already and what are we, we doing? Um, the underpinning principle um, is really about that connectivity through our system of systems and integrated care records. Um, bringing together sort of information um, and to improve connectivity, to make better decision making, to reduce tests, reduce duplication, which are all the things that, um, that, that patients uh, find you know very frustrating and clinicians do as well um, and so therefore in terms of a sort of a um, being able to look at uh, at um, the sort of health and, and, and social care system as a whole is really important so if a patient is is diagnosed with cancer in in Rotherham gets a referral from their GP to the uh, the Rotherham Foundation Trust they will probably then get a referral, um, a tertiary referral to, to Sheffield, but potentially if there is a, um, a, a, a more complex sort of case, then they'll, they'll get a further referral maybe to Leeds. And so it's important that the oncologist in Leeds can actually see the, the records and the connectivity all the way through the system and that the patient and the carers um, and the GP can also get access to that in real time um, at, um, uh, as, is, as is needed to improve outcomes. Next. So what is population health management? Um, there are many people who have many definitions. A, a number of you will have seen this before and you'll be able to watch the video uh, on the link there at your leisure afterwards. But I just wanted to sort of raise these, these three sort of points that it's about recognising that health and wellbeing is more than just about being without disease. It also moves away from managing disease in silos to an approach based on defined populations who, met, who have many multiple disease conditions. And I think, you know, the, the COVID um, crisis that we, we're in at the moment has, has highlighted that in terms of, of, you know, the people who are more vulnerable um, and would have, you know, worse outcomes um, is not just about that infection. It is about their overall um, conditions, their underlying sort of long-term conditions, whether they have diabetes, whether they have uh, coronary heart disease. Um, and, and, and going back to the, to the paper that, um, that Matt, Matt um, explained, you know, we, we, we drilled into that in a lot of detail uh, as, part of, uh, as part of our study, and we'll continue to do that. Um, and then finally, I think sort of it's recognizing that population health management hinges heavily on the use of new technologies and richer information so we've built a cloud-based Yorkshire and Humber data arc um, that actually will allow us to, to get both um, event-driven data, but also sort of batch load of existing um, rich data sets in, in order to, to, to be able to do proper population health management through defining the population, identifying those care gaps by doing sort of clever um, analytics to stratify the risks, uh, which classically we've really only concentrate on avoiding hospital admissions, but actually using predictive analytics and machine learning and AI, then actually we can do much better things to then engage with the patients, manage their care, look at new models of care and measure that outcome. And then it is an iterative process. Next. So what will the data art give organizations? You can see on that screen, I'm not gonna read them all out. Um, but essentially it is about that overall sort of capability um, and actually making sure that we can combine those data to determine value um, through sort of classic sort of uh, techniques. But also um, the great thing about it being a cloud-based platform, it has easy access anytime, any place, anywhere. And to be honest, since we've all been in lockdown, it's been fantastic that actually we have been able to access uh, so the data here um by by using that uh, role-based access 
It was always designed to be research ready and to support the digital innovation hubs in a scalable, secure and affordable way. And we are already capitalizing on that, on that capability. Um, next. So this is um, a, a, an overarching sort of, uh, you've got to have one architectural diagram and this is it. Um, so it shows the, the layers, the platform itself is a Google Cloud platform. We led a five year contract with uh, Deloitte, Google and Synonetics to, to, to work collaboratively with us to, to, to build this uh, population health management platform. Um, and you can see the characteristics there in terms of the integration services, the analytics, um, visualization and data and the security and management. Um, the next layer is, is, is a suite of products um, and we focused uh, on the use case as we were building this of living with and beyond cancer. Um, we got to the to this end of phase one on the 31st of March this year and I think we were actually the only uh, uh, Lycra of the, the first um, the wave ones um, that actually sort of hit that milestone and uh, on time um, to, to, to move to our next phase, which is really about that early life support and actually really starting to use it. It is a fantastic asset. Um, and the users are, of that are essentially commissioners, health providers, clinicians, population health and social care workers, focused initially on, on Yorkshire and Humber, um, but potentially it has that scalability. And then from a developer's perspective, there are data analysts, engineers, scientists, and we ran a, um, um, an academy. I was absolutely determined that as part of this that we would actually upskill our workforce. So we had a, um, a cohort of 40 um, clinicians, managers, um, and uh, analysts um, that actually have had in-depth uh, training and working together in, as multidisciplinary teams to capitalize on this and we'll be running that academy um, four more times over the over the coming years uh, so that we'll have at least 200 people that can then work mm -hmm. as part of train the, the, the trainer next please um, these are just a few examples of the um, of, of the um, the dashboards um, this one was around the living with and beyond cancer and you can see that we've got deprivation indexes, segmentation models, maps of prevalence and the people can slice and dice the data as they want. Once again I sort of talked about capability and therefore people can actually use whichever tools that they particularly want so we're installing uh, our studio uh, within that but actually if people prefer to use Tableau or ClickView and they have their own licensing then they essentially they can access that and, and, and Jeff will talk a little bit about that next. Uh, this is another example of a strategic analytics segmentation model um, that actually this is this is based on publicly available data while, while we, we, we wait for the onboarding of, of all of our organize, organizations um, and this is um, sliced and diced by a uh, primary care network. So as folks will know, as part of the NHS long-term plan, the responsibility for population health management uh, rests with those primary care networks, who were, I think were possibly a little startled um, and, and weren't quite sure, um, you know, sort of how to go about that. But actually, this is a great way of bringing sort of colleagues across primary care, but also across all sectors of, um, uh, of, of health and social care together. Um, and here you've actually got a demonstration using 2018-19 uh, data on the, the, the number of emergency admissions with cancer per 100,000 population that can be sliced and diced via um, deprivation, ethnicity, age, oncology. This is literally just a flavor of, of the things that, that we can uh, and, and will be doing next. So back to sort of data can and how it all sort of fits to, together. So it's a three year uh, funded program the, uh, and we have a number of milestones, as you may imagine, for, for our funding uh, to draw down. Um, despite the fact that we only started on the 1st of October, our first milestone was the 31st of December. And that was about, we, we had to um, uh, load up three of our 10 data sets that we put within our, our portfolio up onto the gateway. And then we'll extend that as we move forward. 
um, and, uh, and we will build that and we will publish and with the intention that by the end of year three um, we become a self-sustaining organization um, so that's sort of the, the plan next this is just a summary of those first three data sets. Um, there's a link at the top there that actually takes you through to the Innovation Gateway. And if you haven't uh, had a look at that, I would recommend that you do. It's publicly available. You can also register with an Open Athens account and get more granularity around the data. So the exemplar themes are around whole pathway, uh, a bit more uh, about this, the Macmillan funded um, comprehensive patient record. Um, that actually um, links both primary and secondary care data um, for, for Leeds patients. Um, and then there are, we covered population specific exemplars, uh, both in, in London and in Yorkshire uh, around pediatric cancer. Um, and you can see the details there. And novel data sources, of course, uh, Genomics England are, are one of our founding partners. And therefore, we, as part of that, uh, partnership, we um, uh, gained access to the, um, the 100,000 100, genome, that's my timer saying that about 15 minutes, my uh, 100,000 genomes and that is also linked to HES and to NCRAS data. So very powerful, very rich um, um, data sources. Next. Uh, and finally, sort of why is, is, is measuring data quality important? Um, and in, and, and there, there are a number of reasons, both in terms of the platform, the data and the research, but it's really about utility uh, to inform future research efforts and then to actually, so that you can take away the pressure on the research themselves of having to do the data wrangling that actually it is, you know, it's, it, it's you know, good quality in means good quality out. You need standards in order to be able to do that. So compliance with SNOMED CT, with FIRE, with, with international standards and then using uh, that in an appropriate way means that you, you get good good quality output next. And finally, this is just another slide that actually shows the assessment of that CPR data. Um, there are another 92 slides of this, if anybody is interested, uh, that actually just shows the breakdown in terms of the admissions by therapeutic area, what the the duration is, the multiple conditions. It's relatively simplistic, but it was an overall assessment of the data quality that we were able to, to then sort of run uh, against, in, in this particular case, 1.8 million records um, uh, to get that assessment. And fairly soon through the, uh, through the gateway, there will be a data quality sort of um, assessment against all of the 440 data sets that are on there. Um, that actually sort of gives an extra level of confidence um, for people who are requesting access uh, through the system. So that's all I wanted to say. Um, Yorkshire and Humber is at the heart of this. Um, Data Can, you know, is a fantastic initiative. I'm delighted to be to be a part of it uh, and delighted to be able to, to, to share what, what we're doing um, with you all today. And I think I'll hand over to Jeff. Or is it Josh? Hello, it's me. <laughs> Sorry. And then Jeff. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you. Uh, um, thank you for joining. And, and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, IQVIA and, and the ODN. So my name is Josh Cook. I am the Programme Director for DataCan within IQVIA, as well as the head of the Oncology Data Network, or ODN, um, within the UK. Um, the ODN is uh, IQVIA's predominant contribution to the hub and essentially what it does is uh, aims to improve the treatment of patients with cancer through providing clinicians within our member trusts with real world evidence and I'll talk a little bit about how we do that as well as improving the opportunities for those patients to participate in recruiting clinical trials. Um, so as I said I'm going to talk about ODN but first I want to talk a little bit about IQVIA. Um, and you can see a number of kind of different uh, um, graphics on, on this page. IQVIA works with an, uh, and across many different areas of life sciences. Within the UK specifically, we employ over 5,000 people across these, these areas that you see. 
and I'll just take you through very high level uh, a little bit about each of them. So starting on the left, um, in Scotland actually we have a very large state-of-the-art laboratory that processes over 9 million tests per year from across Europe and they range from kind of bioanalysis, vaccine tests through to full genomic sequencing. We're also the largest provider of commercial clinical trials. Uh, so those are trials with a commercial sponsor within the UK and that um, allows us to have uh, over 7,000 patients enrolled onto our trials. And that's spread right across the UK. And to support that, we have four what we call prime sites or kind of hubs, if you like, across the UK um, that conduct the highest amount of trials. Um, being uh, UCL Partners, who, uh, as you will have heard, is also a DataCan um, founding partner, the Peninsula, <clears throat> Scotland, and most recently launched and opened last year is Northern England, Northern Prime Site, which covers this area, so Leeds, Sheffield, as well as Greater Manchester. Um, IQVIA is also a, a leading real-world evidence service provider. Uh, we have around 300 data scientists working on both UK and also international projects using non-identifiable patient data for a variety of research purposes to support companies pre-launch as well as post-launch. Our healthcare business directly supports the NHS um, through providing a variety of services such as benchmarking, patient level costing. Uh, we also support with clinical coding and technologies that enable uh, trusts to manage and monitor patient experience. Our information offerings business is, if you like, the traditional IMS health business, if you've come across that, and it provides a prescription, largely prescription audit data from um, huge amounts of, of uh, care settings. So around 85% of retail pharmacies, so community pharmacies, as well as all NHS acute trusts the hospital sector. And this obviously amounts to a very significant um, amount of data, data is generated every single year on the movement of pharmaceutical products and dispensing trends uh, across the UK. We're able to use that to support our commercial services business that essentially uh, support commercial companies and by commercial companies I mean pharmaceutical, the large, mid-size and small, um, biotech, small uh, startups as well, with a variety of commercialization activities from um, market access all the way through uh, pre-launch through to genericization. We also have a large um, sales and uh, contract sales and medical solutions team and provide a number of experienced professionals um, to directly to commercial companies and they can be medical sales liaisons through to nursing staff. Um, IQVIA also support companies with their technologies uh, across all of this but specifically used for commercial purposes so for example um, uh, making sure that we can support with consistent healthcare um, uh, professional customer management. So whilst I've kind of very briefly described um, eight, if you like, distinct groups, um, in actual fact, our teams work across multiple different areas. And the ODN team specifically, which I'll talk about in a moment, works across the clinical trial sector, the real world evidence sector, and the healthcare sector with very clear um, privacy protecting technology at, at the heart of it. So I hope that's kind of given a, a slightly broader perspective of who IQVIA are um, and and uh, provides a bit of context around our involvement around wider initiatives such as DataCan. As a, a bit of a side note, um, as you may well expect, given that explanation of the, the company, we have mobilized um, parts of our business and capabilities to, to support the government in the COVID-19 pandemic. So we're collaborating with the UK government to provide um, a single national trial platform which will hopefully accelerate research on medicines um, that we hope can treat COVID-19 patients. And also we support population testing, um, working with the Department of Health, uh, really kind of leveraging a lot of our, our nursing capabilities. Next slide, please, Louise. Thank you. So given all of that, IQVIA obviously are very excited and proud to be a founding partner within DataCan. 
Um, I should add that it, it was a requirement of the HDR UK bid that there was a commercial partner in each of the hubs and IQVIA was chosen as I've explained. Um, we have a very strong track record, UK and global, um, around our clinical and real world studies, but also our strong reputation in terms of um, uh, a leader in protecting individual patient privacy. And as, as you will hear from everyone today, um, patients are really at the center of everything that we are trying to do. And we really believe that it is possible for um, commercial uh, access to health data to be appropriate, ethical, and importantly, provide fair value back to the NHS, to patients, and also to the UK economy. Um, I do also want to stress that IQVIA do not receive any exclusivity, um, and any privileged or special rights to the data. We have no preferential access to data, nor do we see, receive any grant money. Ultimately, our involvement is really because we want to help advance the appropriate use of, um, of data to be able to bring findings through them um, that will enable kind of better treatments for, for cancer patients. So IQV has put a lot of investment obviously behind this. We see the acceleration of the delivery of the ODN um, structure, infrastructure, sorry, so that trust can really benefit from this increased secure data flow. And the activities of DataCan, we hope, will lead to an increased amount of oncology research within the UK. And that is both um, from a clinical trial perspective, as well as a real world evidence perspective. And we hope that uh, there will continue to be a large amount of research done within the UK and retained within the UK as opposed to being exported. As Matt mentioned, uh, I think right at the beginning, IQV is able to also advise on DataCan, uh, advise DataCan on its commercial strategy with life sciences, um, which is of course incredibly vital for, for DataCan to achieve our sustainability. Um, we've obviously served the UK and international market for well, uh, I think it's well over 50 years. Um, and so want to be able to use our relationships, our expertise and research to um, to help shape DataCan's approach to make sure there's maximum benefit uh, to clinicians and to patients. And lastly, as it says, we do want to continue to grow our reputation um, and provide demonstrable value back to the NHS and importantly, fair value to the NHS. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and again, as Matt showed earlier, this, this slide will be familiar. The UK is a very rich health data ecosystem, but unfortunately it's just not always quick and easy for researchers to access and um, analyze data, link it together to be able to develop those new uh, treatments to improve, uh, improve cancer care. So it really is vital that we have data-driven approaches to address these concerns. So where does ODN really fit in with the data count priorities? Um, Louise, if you could just click on the animation. Um, thank you. The ODN very clearly supports two of the priorities here. Firstly, it supports with the NHS delivery of care. So that's tracking um, unwarranted variation in care, benchmarking across comparable hospitals, enabling clinicians a better understanding of the clinical reality of, of their patient treatment. And secondly, as you can see in the blue, we also are able to support clinical um, study design, site selection, patient recruitment, all of these things that will hopefully help shift some of the statistics that Nev mentioned right at the beginning. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so the ODN really enables a, a quite a nice ecosystem, if you like, between uh, healthcare and life sciences. It's a solution that has um, minimal impact really uh, and is designed to have minimal impact on existing clinical workflow and we work towards a solution that allows for much lower data latency as well as a broader data supply. Um, what we do is we provide analytics back to you in the trusts which will allow you to quantify patient cohorts but also really understand as I said before the unwarranted variation in care that you may see and enable you to really see quite quickly um, the clinical reality of your patient's treatment. In addition, trusts um, can uh, identify potential participants for recruiting trials. I should also stress that um, IQVIA cannot see 
the patient identifiable information that is very much for the clinician to make those uh, those clinical deci um, decisions. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so here you can see how do trusts really benefit um, from becoming a member of the ODN. The ODN um, provides insight into hospitals on your own oncology data. The analytics cover benchmarking at the national level, region or within hospitals that wish to share your information. Um, our current solution allows for structured data sets to be returned back into your hospital within accessible and interactive dashboards, <coughs> excuse me, um, quite quickly and certainly within weeks of submission, which means that your, you, yourself on the call and your fellow clinicians can actually see the data of patients that you have recently seen, not see data of patients that you may have seen, let's say months or, or over a year ago. And on the right there, you can see in development is our clinical trial solution, which really allows you to increase the amount of trials um, matched to potential participants within your hospital on much more of a routine systematic basis. Uh, and this really supports clinicians to offer opportunities as appropriate, and we leave that decision to the clinician, um, to their patients. And obviously, um, uh, the, the benefit of clinical trials, uh, increased amount of clinical trials being predominantly around better patient outcomes. So for that patient, uh, they're able to benefit from a wider variety of patient uh, treatment options. But in addition, the financial benefit from the cost savings, having the uh, patient care and treatment being paid for by the trial company. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so Nev shared this slide before. I'm not going to go through the statistics, but I thought it was worth kind of flagging up again. We really hope that um, we do start to see some of these statistics move over time. Um, we know that patients want to be in trials, but they are missing out and more uh, efforts are needed to help find new, uh, new treatments. And we really believe that automated trial matching can um, help to reduce workload for clinicians and also potentially increase enrollment and faster enrollment um, uh, within the UK. And uh, it's really vital, as you've heard from, from everyone's call so far, and I'm sure Jeff will say exactly the same. It really is important that we have a data-driven approach to addressing these challenges. Uh, and as I said, I really hope that over um, some time we will start to see improvement in these statistics. Um, certainly for, for oncology patients. Next slide, please, Louise. Thank you. And um, so there are really quite a few benefits to joining the, uh, the ODN as I've gone through, and you can see on the, the right hand uh, side of this chart. Um, there's no charge to join the ODN. IQVIA don't charge for this uh, at all. And our teams um, work closely with you so that you can maximize really the benefit and the value of the network to your individual center. Um, we try to ensure alignment uh, with national and, and local regulations. Um, and we very much have a very strong patient protecting um, technology at the center. And really we have a solution that is designed uh, to minimize interruption to your own site staff. We, we appreciate how, how busy um, the staff are. Uh, and, and have a solution to minimize impact. So as I said at the beginning, the, the ODN really exists to fundamentally improve the, the treatment of patients with cancer through providing clinicians within our member um, trusts with real world evidence on the clinical reality through our dashboards, as well as improving the opportunities for those patients to participate in um, clinical trials. And uh, we're really proud of this. It's an integral part of uh, data can activities and uh, we we hope one step towards your trust um, represented on the call here today being really part of of data can and, and the national hub for cancer um, so thank you very much for your time and i'll hand over to jeff uh, thank you very much josh um, so uh, I'm Jeff Hall. Um, I am currently one of the two clinical leaders for the Data Canada Hub. Uh, I have a day job, which is uh, as a medical oncologist. I treat women with gynecological cancer, 
from Leeds and across Yorkshire. Um, but I've also had a very long standing interest in um, health data and digital approaches to care. And I'm one of the chief clinical information officers with a particular focus on the RNI uh, agenda within uh, that department. And as an academic at the University of Leeds, I'm a professor of digital health and cancer medicine at the University of Leeds. So my next slide. This is the overarching strategy for Health Data Research UK. I, I would guide anyone who's particularly interested to read the, the One Institute strategy, but in brief, I think there's a single sentence that, that matches my own personal view. And that is the fact that we are increasingly obliged, uh, rather than this being optional, but we are now obliged to use the large scale data and advanced analysis that modern computers can provide to benefit every single patient interaction and to enhance the recruitment of clinical trials and to support new biomedical discovery to overall enhance patient and public health. And, and that's an ambition that I was really happy to sign up to. So on my next slide. And I know the audience who's joined us today is, is very aware of the fact that, um, that the UK collects a large amount of cancer data. So every individual trust in the country collects data on uh, urgent referrals, the cancer outcome services data set, a very comprehensive data set with enormous detail about every cancer patient, both at diagnosis and through recurrence, the SACT data, which collects information on chemotherapy, specific information to radiotherapy, and that is fantastic. But I guess my cynic's view is there's a slightly back hole, a black hole approach to that, where data gets sucked out of trusts and gets absorbed into the black hole at, at the center of NHS England, um, and also has some other problems for me. So I think that there's inconsistent data models throughout those data sets. So I know the definition of date of diagnosis is not the same for all of those. And, and when you see the data at the other end, the, the quality of the data that is collected is variable. And many trusts don't collect the whole thing, so the completeness of data is variable. And I guess one of my long-standing concerns has been that we only use a very small percentage of the data that's available to us. So in Leeds, we've estimated that we, we send about 5% of the data that uh, is within our record. Uh, and what constitutes the rest of the record? Well, we continue to generate vast amounts of plain text, the letters, the annotations, the reports, that create the narrative that truly describes the care given to cancer patients. But also the, the new data sources that are amenable to computational analysis. So um, we have all had for many years digital radiology. So our PAC systems collects radiology in, in computer accessible form. But we've also now started to digitize the pathology of our patients and make that data available. And of course, we now also have access to the data that comes from single gene genetic analysis, but also increasingly whole genome analysis. Next slide, please. So what's DataCan here to do? Well, once again, I'm, I'm not gonna apologize for stressing that it, essentially we're here to improve access to that existing data. We wanna make it easier to find and we wanna make it easier to use. And the particular reason we're there is to just help everybody use that data. We want to facilitate new research and across the breadth of the cancer journey. So new diagnostics, new treatments, new pathways of care. And that is not a project that we are going to do. That's a project that everybody is gonna do. And we are there to help and support everybody in delivering that. So our ambition is to support research groups within the NHS, within the academic sector, but also crucially within the, the commercial and the charitable uh, sector as well. And as Monica has described, we will make sure that very clear descriptions of available data sets are put onto the HDI UK hub so those groups can see what data is available and choose which data set is best suited to the work they're proposing. We're also very keen to improve the quality of data. Now, there are two ways to improve the quality of data. We can all employ an ever larger army of data clerks to extract the data. Um, but of course, that is not sustainable. And what we have to do is start applying new technologies uh, to the data that we have. And so we're very fortunate within the DataCan Hub to have access to quite uh, a significant number of centers who have expertise in advanced computational analysis. So 
artificial intelligence, machine learning, the application of natural language processing. So we will work very closely with those, those computing centers of excellence to improve the quality of data that all of us can collect without increasing the costs to ourselves, both of time and of money. And what we'll very deliberately set out to do is, is to access those new data sets. So the genetic, the molecular phenotyping data, the imaging, the pathology. And I'm very keen that we also get data that is entered by patients. So this is patient entered data, the patient reported outcomes. And I'm very keen to link up data at the moment. Cancer data relies very much on cancer data provided by hospitals, but I'm looking to see whether we can extend that out to the data that is captured in primary care, hospices, community care, across the breadth of the cancer pathway. Next slide, please. So, the really key thing that we're looking to do is make this data more real time. And that was an ambition we described last uh, summer and last October, but never has that come into sharper focus than on the work that we've done in the reaction to COVID-19. So as others have described, we worked with academics at the HDI UK Centre in London to begin to examine the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic was having on cancer patients. And there's two broad uh, aspects to the publication we generated. The first is a description of the impact of comorbidity and its potential to uh, impact uh, both cancer death, but also the impact of COVID-19 on cancer deaths. But then crucially, and the real world data piece of that work was to look at the impact of COVID-19 on cancer services. And what we did is we accessed data, two different types of data, from a number of cancer centres across the UK. So the pathway into our hospitals, the two-week wait referrals, which is the data on the right-hand panel, and on the left-hand panel, chemotherapy activity. And what both of those data sets showed, and importantly, consistently, from Leeds, two centres in London, and all of the centres in Northern Ireland, is a very profound and significant impact on our patients coming to hospital. So the most dramatic and most consistent impact is that on the two-week wait referrals. Uh, and that doesn't seem to differ across the country. And I would argue that's the country's, the public's response to the single message that the UK government gave out. But then perhaps a little more vari variation in changes in chemotherapy data, which I think you can relate to COVID activity within a hospital. So I think London shows a more profound drop than Yorkshire shows. But when we captured this data, London had significantly more COVID activity than, than Yorkshire did. So that went from a, a conversation and an email to a manuscript within four weeks. And the manuscript we produced it contained data that was 10 days old. And that is a radical change to the way that cancer data is used. And that manuscript was um, sent to the chief medical officers for the four UK nations. It's been discussed at the SAGE group. Uh, and one of the key messages is a call for real-time data. And one of the things that DataCan will adopt is an, ambush, an ambition to unite data from across the UK that allows us to examine this in more detail. So on the next slide, uh, there is an ambition to continue the work with the HDI UK Centre. And we'll look across the breadth of cancer services. So not only two-week wait referrals, but our expectation is that we will see a drop in referrals, sorry, a drop in cancer diagnoses, and ultimately, those patients will therefore present later and we'll see an increase in the stage of presentation and an increased proportion of patients who have an emergency presentation. We expect to see changes in the patterns of chemotherapy, surgery and radiotherapy. And ultimately, unfortunately, we're predicting a negative impact on overall survival, so one-year outcomes. So we managed to get data from a number of, of quite well, the, uh, the partner organizations in DataCan, but our ambition is to recruit further centers across the UK, collecting really high level aggregated data on a very simple data model that we can unite together. And what's great for Yorkshire and Humber is our plan is to integrate that together within the Yorkshire and Humber Lycra Cloud. So that is a Lycra Cloud environment that the 22 hospitals across Yorkshire and Humber have already signed the data sharing agreement to use. So hopefully we can move at pace. And what we'll do is we'll seek commercial support to perform that work over the next 12 to 18 months. And I'm delighted that our first commercial sponsor has stepped forward to offer funding to do that. Next slide, please. 
So in addition to the pace of data, what we want to do is increase the breadth of data. Uh, as ever, one of the, the things that I've really enjoyed working with IQVIA is they have an interesting solution to problems. So when we started talking about natural language processing, uh, I was told to hang on for a few weeks. And a few weeks later, IQVIA came back saying that they'd bought Linguamatic. So this is a, a natural language processing uh, company based uh, a spin out from the University of Edinburgh, now based on the Cambridge Science Park, which has now become an IQVIA company. And we're beginning to evaluate that technology to examine the, the plain text of a medical record and extract ever, ever greater detail and ever higher quality data. Our partnership with Genomics England allows us to, to work really uh, at scale on single gene uh, aberrations within cancer, but also the ability to integrate whole genomes that are being done on either under the 100,000 genome or the, the second, the next generation of, of testing that will follow that. And as I've already mentioned, it's the application of artificial intelligence and machine learning and the ability to bring in those approaches to the analysis of radiology images. But again, something that already exists across our region, the, the Northern Pathology Imaging Cooperative, which is again a nationally funded collaboration based in Yorkshire and Humber, uh, which will bring digital pathology on those patients. Next slide. And all of those data items begin to build this really comprehensive jigsaw puzzle that academic groups and commercial groups are desperate to get access to. So no longer is a few clinical structured data items uh, sufficient for a detailed analysis of, of these issues. What we're looking to do is combine clinical data, high quality curated clinical data, alongside digital radiology, digital pathology, and the genetic and molecular data and if we can combine those data sources then companies like IQVIA are very keen to work with us and by us I mean DataCan the hub but also the individual data controllers uh, to use that data in a way that can support the research. So um, what we as DataCan are absolutely passionate to ensure is that we ensure fair value. We can see the value to IQVIA of this but what's important and is absolutely enshrined within that industrial life science strategy is that we ensure fair value at a number of levels. And, and the first is for the NHS PLC nationally, the UK, the, the country as a whole. But also it's really important that we can articulate and ensure delivery of fair value to trusts and to the commissioners. But ultimately, we have to make sure we ensure fair value to our patients and the public. Next slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit more about the oncology data network. In many ways, Josh has described uh, the oncology data network from a commercial point of view. I thought it'd be quite helpful to explain why I am such an enthusiastic supporter of this. What value do I think that this will bring to Leeds, to Yorkshire and to the country? So what I really like about this is, is this is real world data. Uh, you know, clinical trials are a driving force of cancer medicine, but I've long held the view that they're a good way of generating perfect data on an imperfect population. And what real world data can do is provide data, perhaps imperfect data, on the perfect population because it examines everybody. What's good about this is it doesn't create yet another data set that we all have to collect. It will use existing data sets. So what we're asking trust to do is redirect the data extracts that they provide to SACT, the, the, the data extract they provide to COSDI, and direct that towards the, the data can ODN, sorry, the ODN at IQVIA. By bringing that data together, by placing it within a very secure, trusted third party environment, that allows a number of things to happen. And, and principally, what we will all benefit from is that a dashboard of analytics will be built by a commercial team but a dashboard of analytics that will be built by IQVIA, but designed by clinicians. And the more we engage with that process, the better that dashboard will work for us. And what's great, I sit on the national steering group for this, is once again, the really strong voice that patients and public have in that. So within the DataCan application, we aim to recruit 20 centers across the UK. Uh, we've also already got uh, leads, UCL in London, and hospitals down south to commit. 
I'll be very clear on this conversation that my ambition is to recruit as many centres from across Yorkshire and Humber as possible. If we go on to my next slide, that's because there's another value and that is when we do all do that. When we all recruit our data into this platform, we get some additional benefit. And the additional benefit that we'll get is we'll get the ability to track patients as they move between our centres. That's incredibly hard at the moment within local or national data. This will enable those patients to be linked as they move from one district general hospital to one cancer centre to a tertiary referral centre. And what that allows us to do is to do comparative analysis of levels of activity, numbers of diagnosis, but also to examine pathways of care where they produce good endpoints, where they produce bad endpoints, and allow us to have a better informed conversation about how we can improve the care of patients. Next slide. But the realization came when we worked out that if we really made that data flow, and ultimately if we make that data flow in real time, so if I see a patient in clinic and I enter a data item which says that this HER2 positive breast cancer patient has recurred, then if that data flows through um, iCubius platform, they can send us back triggers to, to recognize that that patient is eligible for a clinical trial. Now, they will not know who that individual patient is, but the system should be designed such that it can re-identify that patient as it comes back into the trust. And clinicians can there, then recognize clinical trials that are open and active in their own center, in regional centers, in national centers, and this is a network that will run across Europe. So theoretically, it provides access to clinical trial opportunities that exist for our patients across Europe. And our very clear ambition here is that we're going to increase clinical trial activity uh, and improve access for patients. And there's really good information and data that says that the more trials that you make available for patients, the better outcomes are achieved. Next slide. So what I wanted to talk about was a particular data set that we've made available as a wave one data set, and it demonstrates this longitudinal record. And it's a piece of work that I've been performing with, with others in Leeds, a co-investigator, Pro Professor Adam Glazer, who is one of the pediatric oncologists. And we set out a very simple ambition some years ago, uh -huh, something we thought was very simple some years ago, to link hospital records to primary care records. So what we were aware was that cancer registries collected excellent data on patients of diagnosis, and they also captured patients of death, but they knew very little at that time about cancer recurrence. And although COSDI collects that data now, the data quality is not great. But within each of our electronic health records, we essentially have a longitudinal record of a patient from referral to diagnosis through to discharge, either because the patient has achieved long-term survival or because the patient is transferred back to the community care team prior to their death. And what we realized is that by linking that to the primary care record, we actually had the ability to create a comprehensive patient record, a longitudinal record from birth to death. And that allows us to examine a number of things in detail. Uh, cancer recurrence. So can we use an automated examination of the electronic record to identify cancer recurrence, and also the ability to look at the impact of comorbidity and the development of late effects on a cancer diagnosis. Next slide. So this is a, on the left-hand side, the figure here shows how we do that. We take our identifiable data within the hospital, and we take that same patient's identifiable record within TPP's research database, otherwise known as R1. And we both de-identify that patient's data and we do that using the same system. And therefore, when the data gets transferred to the university, those two data sets can be linked. And then crucially, a second round of de-identification occurs. And that means that a patient sits within a research data set who cannot be reverted back to an individual patient by any single member of that team. And that was a really key part of the security we proposed within our ethics. And on the right-hand side, this is an example of how we think we can detect cancer recurrence. So this is one of my own cancer patients, a, a patient with ovarian cancer. And what you see, all we're showing you here is the activity count, the number of events that happen in the electronic health record. And what you see are these spikes of activity, and those spikes of activity perfectly correlate 
with cancer recurrence and they reflect the fact that on recurrence patients get more blood tests, more scans, chemotherapy events, outpatient appointments, etc. Next slide. And then the second piece of work that we're doing here is the, the impact of comorbidity. So on the right hand side, what we're looking at is the impact of diabetes. So in the middle is, is a graph with looking at the impact of diabetes on 350,000 cancer patients. And you can see the, the negative impact that diabetes is associated with in cancer patients. And at one level, that was a very much an expected result. But I guess what I was expecting less was the fact that that is not consistent across all cancers. So uh, cancer A here is lung cancer, and you can see there's essentially no impact of, of diabetes on lung cancer outcome. Whereas if you look at the impact of diabetes on melanoma outcome, then there's a very significant and very profound impact. Next slide. So what is my ambition for Yorkshire and Humber? Um, specifically with respect to this comprehensive patient record. Well, once again, like the ODN, can we extend that? We all collect uh, this COSDI data and many of the hospitals in our region that are, are affiliated with GPs who use TPP software and therefore patients within that are within their R1 database. So can we extend the Leeds Cancer Centre record linked to TPP's R1 to other hospitals? In addition to the COSDI extract, it is actually possible to ask for your data back from Public Health England. It's not straightforward, and I would be happy to guide any individual trust into doing that. But that would allow us to each link the public health extract of our data to the R1 data. But what I'm really looking for, I guess, are those very digitally mature hospitals who can do quite a granular data extraction. Okay, next slide. So I think this is my final slide. Um, what I hope we've all shown you this afternoon is the, the ambition uh, of DataCan, the, the HDI UK hub for cancer. And you know, we very specifically brought that to Yorkshire and Humber. This is one of our first events to, to showcase DataCan around the country. It reflects the very key involvement of Yorkshire and Humber in the development and delivery of that hub. And I guess what I'm trying to offer you, what we're all trying to offer you is a number of ways to become involved. So the first thing I'd, I'd like all of the people on the call to, to reflect upon is whether they, their trusts would be willing to contribute simple high level aggregated data to the COVID-19 oncology network that we're hoping to create. So can we extend this information on two week waits, on cancer diagnoses, can we examine as a country the impact that COVID-19 is having on cancer services across the UK? And can we share the learning that will come from that to guide the reconfiguration of our services? The oncology data network, the offering from IQVIA, uh, so are trusts on this call willing to link their SACT and COSDI data? And if we can just go back a slide, uh, can we link the SACT and, and COSDI data from hospitals across the region? And then can we do this longitudinal record linking uh, data from each of the hospitals to GP records? But as a final point, the thing I want to stress is that in the same way that we are here to support clinical, academic and commercial research across the whole country, that's very true for Yorkshire as well. So how can we support your local project and program? Thank you. Thanks very much, Jeff. That's great. Um, I'm conscious that we have um, run over time a little bit and we, we had a few teething problems starting. Um, Nev, do you want to start sharing some of the questions that we've, that we've got? Or I know you yes. have to move quite promptly. Yeah. No, let, let, let's, let's see what we can get done. So I guess if anybody's got any questions, put them into the chat. Uh, there's a few questions that surfaced uh, while we were pulling the meeting together that I'm going to fire out to get the conversation going. And, I think that the first one, Matt, I think I'm going to direct towards you. And I think just, just some facts and figures. So what's the time period for the Data Can Award and, and what's going to happen after uh, you know, the award period? Yeah, thanks. Uh, the, uh, the award's um, about four and a half uh, million pounds and it is until the autumn of 2022. 
the aim of setting when setting these all the hubs up was that they would move to a model where they became uh, self-sustaining over the, the period of operation and that's partly by entering into uh, agreements with um, life sciences companies and, and other funders to, to get us to a, a position where we can uh, become self-sufficient in, in future years. Thanks Matt, that's, that's useful. So I think Data Can's not just here for the short term, hopefully it's here uh, for much longer than that and this is really about getting it built and getting it started I think, isn't it? Indeed, yeah. Okay, that's great. Uh, and Jeff, public trust always a, always a hot issue in, in this area. How are we going to ensure we have the trust of the public uh, about what we do with their data in, within this project? So it's absolutely essential that we take the public with us on this. Um, I'm absolutely delighted that uh, we were able to recruit Chris Carrigan from Leeds to lead our PPIE work. Chris um, is at the very uh, head of the Use My Data national group. Um, one of the, the key organizations that the government and Whitehall use to guide them on the use of patient data. And he's at the very heart of our work. Uh, and as a number of people have stressed, we'll make them at the, the center of every decision we make to ensure that we carry the, the public's trust with us as we do this work, particularly as we move into the, that difficult area of commercial collaboration. Thank you, Jeff. And just on that uh, piece about the commercial collaboration, maybe 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 Josh and Matt maybe maybe could spend some time outlining really what the engagement plan is for data can around that from both of their perspectives one from the industry side and one from the you know the more academic side you are on mute, mute guys Sorry. Matt would you want to start with them um board and then I'll, I'll talk specifically yeah so I guess yeah so the, the, the aim is twofold for us is um, collaborations with life sciences companies um, both in you know, short term um, uh, pieces of research uh, where they're interested in a particular you know, individual question uh, which we would undertake as a sort of a you know, service type of agreement. But also we're looking for longer term relationships with organisations as well in sort of associate partnership type of uh, approach. Mm -hmm. Where we work with a, a company on a, on a longer term basis to to get them more engaged with what we're uh, you know, our aspirations are as a as a national national uh, group uh, and to to link them in. Uh, with with what we're doing, and also potentially link them in with other companies that have got an interest in the same area. So you know, bring in um, and produce um, uh, consortiums of organisations in, interested in similar in similar areas. And in the in the academic setting, then very much working with with key uh, cancer organisations to to work with them on um, building data sets that they're uh, they've got interest in in around particular questions. Uh, and you know we've, we've shown what we can do in a relatively short space of time with uh, specific questions around the, the COVID-19 that, um, that we've mm. talked about uh, today. Thanks Matt. And, and um, just to very quickly add, um, we obviously will be or are starting to engage with companies both large and and small as well, as right from the kind of you know um household name so to speak through to to much more of the kind of startup with one maybe two uh, different therapies and and this type of data is really interesting um to not just companies that are based in the uk but to international companies as well mm -hmm. thanks guys that's really helpful and, and a question i guess that is in my mind as well it's about fair value being returned to the nhs through data can Jeff, and again, Josh, maybe we'd like to talk about that in a little bit more detail, I, I guess. Uh, there's a big ask here for organisations to spend time and effort contributing data. Maybe talk a little bit about, you know, what, what will be coming back to them uh, if, they, if they engage with this pro programme. Uh, Josh, I'm happy to kick off with that. So um, I have to say that's absolutely my, um, my clear focus is to make sure that this is not a, a one-way process. So data is going to flow to IQVIA. It has enormous value to them. We should recognize that. We should clearly describe that to our patients and our public. But there's an enormous potential here to, to trusts uh, and to the NHS because IQVIA have expertise and will bring resource to the, uh, to the process that, that 
I have to say, my organization just simply doesn't have um, without support from outside. So I think it, it, it's absolutely something. It, it's, a, it's something that we have made very clear to our patients and public that they need to challenge us at every point. And, you know, the, the greatest uh, testament to the fact that we've got that right is that more and more trusts want to become part of it because mm -hmm. they see the value. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, and, and just add kind of quite specifically on the ODN, um, mm. <clears throat> as, as Jeff mentioned earlier, we have a country advisory group. Jeff is, is one of our kind of lead clinicians on that. And we have a number of um, uh, patient representatives within that uh, that we continue to. We share our strategy, our priorities. We take guidance from them. Um, and that includes uh, around fair value. So as mm. I said before, IQVIA don't charge hospitals to join yeah. the network. And we don't charge any license fee or any, you know, if you match a patient, we get a fee. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. um, we hope that through providing that information, a trust will benefit to improve their, uh, their, their kind of day-to-day -day clinical um, uh, treatment as well as open more opportunities up. We um, then want to, in a non-identified aggregate way, use that information that we can sell um, to other companies to do studies on how effective is a certain drug in the real world within a certain tumour type. So we can charge a fee for that and that operates within the um, uh, Department of Health framework for value. Thank you. That's, very, that's very helpful. And maybe just on that a little bit uh, more detail really. Monica, maybe you could answer a question on sort of the legal basis for holding this data uh, and, and where we are with that, and what the considerations that you, we've already you've already taken in that respect. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, Nev. Yeah. No. We obviously we take the information governance very very seriously. Um, as I mentioned as part of my presentation, DataCan is not expecting to be a data controller, but um, where we're working sort of closely um, with. Um, uh, for existing data sets that, as I described as part of our portfolio, they come with their own IG and, and, and ethics associated with it. And in, in a lot of cases, those are already linked and then anonymized uh, before being made um, more accessible. Um, specifically for some of the suggestions that Jeff uh, has, has proposed and, and working very closely with the, the Yorkshire and Humber care record and, 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 the, and the LICRA setup, um, we've worked very closely with NHSX and NHS Digital over the last few months to make sure that actually that we we have got all of that legal basis covered. Um, so our expectation is that we use the um, the national de-identification tool Privatar, um, and that requires legal direction from NHS England to provide that solution as as as, as part of that delivery function that data processing agreements between NHS Digital in order to be that third pro third party processor on our behalf um, has that um, agreement with our with our lead uh, controller and in our case from the auction number that is actually Humber Teaching uh, Foundation Trust and then the final thing is that actually for all the Lycras that we're able to demonstrate that the, the common law uh, duty of confidentiality is, mm -hmm. is met with respect to secondary uses of data so there are essentially four way, only four reasons to set aside uh, the, the, the CLDC, and that's the public interest, uh, legal requirement, uh, section 251 or explicit consent. So the approach that we're taking is, is, is uh, certainly in the short and to medium term is that there is a collaborative partnership um, and that we, ha uh, that we have section 251 to uh, support via CAG and the Secretary of State um, to make sure that, that, that everything is covered. So, yeah, Excellent. that's uh, how we're dealing with it. Thanks, Monica. That's really useful and, and some good detail there as well. I've got a question from one of uh, uh, our guests uh, from uh, Lawrence. And the question is, Will there be uh, joint working between the different hubs, uh, for example, DataCan and the DigiTrials uh, digital innovation hubs? M might that happen? Get Jeff, I guess maybe you could maybe answer that in first. Yeah, instance. so, so um, it's interesting that that specific link has been made. So uh, we have had uh, a meeting already with a commercial organization and three of the hubs uh, were invited to join that meeting because it was a, a group that was really interested in the use of real world data to guide clinical trials, particularly in cancer. Mm. And actually those words describe three of the hubs. Mm. So the meeting did bring in um, 
the, the Digi Trials from Oxford, the Real World from London and the Cancer Hub from, from across the UK to, to work together. The conversation felt, found that actually it was much more the, the Cancer Hub who could help and support that. Mm. But we will absolutely not hesitate to bring in the expertise of others. So some of the work that we've been doing on COVID-19 has actually been supporting the acute care hub who have been leading the very detailed work mm. on which, you know, predictive models of who does what on intensive care. So, yeah, very much it's an individual hub, but it's working together as a network and part of the larger HDI UK family. Okay, that's fantastic. Look, guys, we're, we're 10 minutes over our allotted time, and I know we're all extremely busy. I think all of us, uh, the panel in particular, will be very happy to take any questions you want to to launch to us over email. Uh, I think sometimes that, that's not a bad way to uh, to follow up. I think just to reiterate uh, from an HSN perspective, there's great potential to do great good across Yorkshire here, and I'd encourage you all to think about how you can engage with this project. I think what we've heard today is it is a great example of what collaboration should look like uh, with lots of different parties all playing their uh, their valued role in delivering something of real value to the region and nationally. So I'd encourage you to, to reach out after this, uh, this, uh, this call uh, and, and find out more and find out how you can work with the project. Uh, I think if there's no more questions, uh, I'm going to thank all our speakers. Uh, there's no round of applause on Zoom, but uh, thank you for me. That was a very comprehensive uh, presentation and I think everybody will have appreciated uh, and and say thank you to all our attendees for joining taking the time to join us uh, and again please please reach out and engage with us as we move further uh, so for me it's thank you very much uh, and I'm sure the same from our panelists